The final stage to deploy our project to Azure will go as follows using this video tutorial. First thing we want to do is go ahead and open up Visual Studio and open up our project that we wish to deploy to Visual Studio. Second, what we want to do is go and log in to Visual Studio, which will actually help our connection with our live account to access our Azure account for Imagine. Remember again, it has to be a personal account. Once you've successfully logged in, we're going to go ahead and go over here to View, Server Explorer. And what we're going to do is see that we have now Azure found on our account. This is automatically connected. But what I want to do is connect to our database so that I can view it and make sure that we're getting our data published. So go down to Data Connections, right click, and add a connection. This is going to require that we actually go to Azure because we need to know our server name. You would also need to know the database account name and password that you set in the earlier video, which would be different than your Azure Live account login. So we're going to go ahead and drop this down temporarily. Oops, hang on. Let's go ahead and close that. Drop this down. Go to Azure. Hold on. Log in to your Azure account. And we're going to click on just this icon, All Resources, which will show you all your configured resources. You'll see the database that we created earlier and the web app that we created or earlier. And this was created automatically on behalf of the database that was created. So those are the three things that we need to focus on right this second. What we need to do is find out the server name. So I'm going to go ahead and click on um, our database here. And on the top right hand corner, you'll see Contosa Nathan Server database windows net. Make sure I apologize. Let me just verify again. Oops, ah, hang on. I apologize. It is database.windows.net. And we're going to change this to SQL Server Authentication and use the account, as I said before, that we created. Save the password. I'm going to click here, and you'll see the database that we created earlier is now visible. Go ahead and test the connection, and we are successful. Now, granted, currently there will be no data in the tables, but that's what will happen after we publish. Okay, in preparation for this publish, what we need to do is actually go back to Azure. We want to go to our SQL Server platform and go to our firewall. And you'll actually see that I have my IP address currently set. But by default, there, is no, there are no IP addresses. So in order for our client to access the server and access the data on the server, when we publish it, we need to go ahead and add our current IP address, which is here, to our rule. We do that by hit Add Client IP, and then hit Save. Oops, hang on. My apologies. Let me save that. And then let me add it again, and then save. Okay, there we go. And you'll see that my IP address is now part of the firewall rule. The other thing we want to look at is our connection string. Again, we shouldn't need this because it should be pulled over automatically. But if you look here, show database connection strings. If you ever have a problem and you need your connection string, you can, you can pull it from here. But again, remember that your 
username and password is not passed, you have to manually enter it in order for it to work. Another tool that you can use to help save you in case something goes wrong is if you actually go to your resources and go to your web app. Oops, I apologize. Let me go back to resources and yeah, go into your web app and then go up here to more. You can get your published profile and download it. Once you download it, go ahead and open it up in a notepad or text document viewer. And you can actually see your entire profile, which will include your encrypted password, which you could use to manually publish, and your username to manually publish. We're not going to use this, but in the event that something goes wrong during your publish, you could always go back to this and set up your configuration manually. Let's put this off to the side. Now that we have our IP and our firewall set, we have our connection string in case we need it for anything, and our publish settings in case we need those for anything, we can then go back to Visual Studio. And then Visual Studio over on the right hand side, actually go to your solution, uh, explore, scroll down, and open up your web config file. Because this database currently does not have the tables built, what I want to do is remove this real quick, which we put in, we commented this out earlier. And we'll, we'll comment it out again later because this is going to wipe out the data if it was already there. But since there's none there, this is just going to create or instant initialize all the data and load default data set. So let's go ahead and save that. Go back over here and go to publish. So we're right-clicking on our project, hitting publish, and notice that it has, it actually sees my, my Azure connection here. And I'm going to go to the very top and just look. And in the event that I did not have a profile here, let's say that I remove that profile. Close. I could go ahead and see start the wizard from scratch. Click here and actually go if, if this wasn't even showing, but it should because we're connected to our account here, you can manually connect to it, but we don't have to do that. Because if you view here, this is our group, and this is the web app that we created in our earlier video. So we want to select that. Next, we want to deploy to the web. It will automatically connect to the server. This information is available in that published file that I downloaded earlier, text file, site name, our username and our encrypted password is also available in that published file that I downloaded just a few minutes ago. Um, destination URL, say password, validate connection, and this should be successful. In the event that something's wrong here, go ahead and make sure that all this information matches the published data from this file here. Okay, and you can actually see that it, the published URL, the password, the username, the destination URL and so on are all part of that file. Go ahead and go next. And I think that's all we have to do. But what I'm going to do is make sure that it's choosing the correct connection string. And this is my connection string here. Make sure that it matches the connection string we downloaded or we saw um, in, earlier in the video. And we want this to be code first migrations. Go ahead and start preview, which will show you all the changes that need to be pushed out to the server. Currently, I have nothing on the server, no data, no nothing. So I go ahead and publish. Cross our fingers. Okay, now we are running on our um, Azure server, as you can see by the URL here. Click on students to make sure that the data was loaded, and it is. And from here, we can go ahead and edit, modify, save, view details, and delete. So we can see that everything is working perfectly. Now, also notice that I have a student's name up here. I apologize for that. <clears throat> this was actually a project that um, he sent me to test on Azure, and that's exactly what we are doing. Let's go ahead and close this out. We're going to go back to our web config, 
uh, that were published. We can go back and remove our context. Okay. Go ahead and save it. And you're ready to move on to the next part of your project.